guess I've always been a maker, right from early times, from fiddling around in my dad's shed and, uh, and then later on at school. The stuff at college was largely based in the arts and crafts tradition, but I wanted something more modern and uh, looked towards modernism. And the Bauhaus was just an absolutely huge influence for me. And then there was architecture, uh, starting with the family trips that we used to have. We used to go to castles and country houses and then there were the direct influences from my studies in modernism. Frank Lloyd Wright, Le Cabusier. The whole mess of modernist sculpture, uh, Picasso's abstractions, uh, Arp, Giacometti, uh, the simplifications and the refining of form, Brancusi, Moore, Hepworth, huge, huge influences even down to painters, Magritte, uh, Barnett Newman and Ben Nicholson. Huge influences from surrealism, uh, the primitive cultures, mysteries of ritual and chance association. They're still part of uh, what I do with objects and containers. It was sort of an epiphany when I discovered clay was early 70s and it was one of those things it just changed my life I can't imagine my life without clay it's just there all the time and to have a partner that feels the same way about clay it's sort of like a compulsion for both of us We both approach it very, very differently. Celia's very orientated towards vessels for the table. Very functional, uh, practical. That's her history, her training. Uh, my interest is much more sculptural, yet the language is exactly the same. We ask the same questions. We come up with the same solutions for each other's work. The issues are the same with her pieces, with my pieces. The humble mug or the pompous sculpture. It's a very physical process working with clay. A lot of the work is simply repetitive. It's necessary, it's hands-on, and it's mucky. Sometimes uh, I'll mix glazes, sometimes Celia will mix glazes. I do most of the kiln loading, uh, it's just the way it's worked out. But we take it in turns and share a lot of the processes. The cycles in the studio, they're, they're a bit like the cycles at home. So they're sort of overlapping patterns and rhythms. You work through the process and there's never a sense of a beginning and an end because all of the cycles overlap each other. So there's different stages of making always in process. I'm quite conscious of setting myself rules, almost boxes to work within. Far from limiting creativity, I, I think it's a real stimulus because you have to be creative within limits. Sometimes the limits are set by materials. There's a limit with how big I can make pieces to fit into the kiln. Part of the joy of my assembled pieces is that I can transcend the limit sizes of the kiln. By 
taking the pieces that I've made separately and assembling them afterwards into uh, larger structures. To some extent it needs some initial planning. Other times it can be uh, much looser with the organic pieces. Well, that's actually quite a nice one that I haven't done anything with yet. Which sometimes will begin completely intuitively. The piece will morph and it will change from the original maquette. It will, it will grow and change as I'm working on the piece. Sometimes pieces will flow really well. The clay will be just in the right condition. Everything will be in tune. Some of these pieces that have run sweetly finally get blessed by the fire. They're the pieces that you always keep for exhibitions. Each firing has its own character. It's a bit like Christmas when you open the kiln. Sometimes you get the, oh wow, didn't expect that. It takes a while to get used to the present that you didn't expect wasn't quite what you wanted or quite what you expected. And then sometimes those are the pieces that really grow on you. They have qualities that you didn't expect and uh, you find magic in them. There you go. See, that was cool in there. Doesn't it? Look at that. Thank mm -hmm. you.